First, thank everyone for joining in to this Cosmo Campfire, which is on the topic rate cards, which is a new feature that we've recently added in our 1.63 release. So I'm excited to demonstrate this for you guys today. My name is Lexi and I cover customer success with Aprika. I've been with the company a little over two and a half years now and in the Salesforce ecosystem for a little bit over three years now. I am based in the United States and you'll mostly see me with uh, revolving customer support. On the agenda today, we are going to discuss what a rate card is and why you should use or when you will need to use rate cards and then get into a demo on how to use this functionality. So getting straight into it, um, and I'm sorry, I missed that last part. If you have any questions during the demo, please feel free to enter them during, in the chat. Uh, there's also like a Q&A box that you can enter questions in. And at the end of the demonstration, we'll open up for um, any questions that you guys may have and review them at that point. And then if you um, need to jump off, we will record this session and add it to our website to be viewed at a later date. All right, jumping into this, what is a rate card? A rate card is a container for a group of rate card entry records. And what that means is the rate card entries will contain different billing and cost rates for a particular function. The rate card is related to an account record, will, which will enable you to create a set of rates for just one account. And then that can vary from the rates that are used for, for other accounts in your org. So now you can assign rates for different functions and different skills, um, particularly for um, just one account to be used on different projects. So why would you use a rate card? The rate card financial tracking method allows you a, a way of applying specific rates to all projects that are associated with a particular customer. And then only rate cards that relate to that account can be used on the project. So if you have a project that is associated to a different account, um, you won't be able to pull in the same rates from a different account, uh, another account that you have in your org. And I'll show you how that looks when setting up your project. Our objectives for today will be to review how to align your roles to different functions how to create your rate cards or clone them. You can also create adjustments on the rate card. So we'll, we'll view that. And then understand how the rate card financials are calculated on our project. So let's go ahead and jump into the demo. So first and foremost, I would like to show you a little bit of setup here. So um, when we introduce this, this uh, feature, you'll need to go in and update your billing rate and cost rate on your project, as well as your rate adjustment object. And I'll show you how to do that. So on your project, if you go to the object manager for the project object, navigate to your fields and relationships, and then go to the billing rate. Um, and then again, for the cost rate, you're going to select the field name. So just going back to our fields and relationships so that you can see this. Um, you'll want to click on the field label here instead of selecting edit from the dropdown. And what that will do is allow you to see the values that are existing on here. So you might not have the rate card value added if you haven't used this feature yet. Um, once you've added this field here and on your cost rate, it will be available to select on your project. Okay, so I've already added this here. Uh, it'll need to specifically say rate card, capital R, capital C. And then the next thing you'll want to consider is adding values for your function. So we've included a few values um, in the function field label, um, but of course you might have some that are specific to your business. And this is actually a pick, uh, available as a pick list value set. And that's because this function um, or field is available on multiple different objects. So it'll be managed all in one place as a pick list value set. So here we'll go in and select that value for the function. And you can add in different values as required. 
So once you get in all of the values for your functions, then you can go in and assign them to your roles. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, just view the roles quickly. I've, I've already assigned these, um, but uh, just to give you a view of this, I just created a list view, added the function field to my list view, and uh, went ahead and added all of the functions as required. All right, so now that we've done this, we'll, we can navigate to the account that we want to create the rate card for. We can also create the rate cards directly from the rate card object and just populate the account field um, so that you know which account this will relate to. Okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do so from this account here. I'm just going to select new on my rate cards related list, and this is going to open up the re rate card creation modal. Um, so this is going to allow us to populate all of the details as required. So first thing we'll want to do is come up with our uh, rate card name, and you can see that the account for this rate card has automatically been populated for me. And I'm going to set this up for the fiscal year uh, of 2023. All right, so let's go ahead and start adding in our functions. And to do this, we'll select uh, the different roles or functions that are relating to the roles for this project. In this case, I will have a project manager in, who, in which I have um, a set billable and cost rate for. I'm gonna add three more roles and then also set up a few different um, rates for a consultant. So um, the reason why I've added two functions for the consultant is in addition to setting a function, um, a rate for a function, you can also set a skill in relation to that function. So when this consultant is carrying out a certain skill on the project, um, then they will be billed at a different rate than when they are just completing tasks under their consultant function. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and enter those values. And then lastly, we're gonna add a rate for our designer function. All right, so now that we have this all complete, we'll go ahead and save. And then you can see um, our, our rate card. Oh, um, well, we've navigated to our rate card object after creating this. Uh, so what we'll do is go ahead and set up our project and pull those rates into a project to see how that affects our project. Okay, so I already have my project created here from a template that I've created. Um, I do need to come in and edit my financials. So the first thing you'll want to do is establish the account on the project. So this is gonna be a filtered field. Once you populate your account, then you will be able to see the rate cards that are relating to that account. Um, so if you leave this blank, you won't be able to see the correct values for your rate card. Um, search field right here. Okay, so I have my account populated. I'm going to go ahead, set my billing type and my billing rate and cost rate. Now need to be changed to rate card. And then I can select the rate card that we've just created for Edge Communications fiscal year 2023. And now that I've changed my billing information on this project, I'll also want to come come in. Um, I have my tax label and everything. I'll also want to come in and update the financials for this project so that all of the rates can be updated. Okay, so I'm going to force a financial recalculation and select save. All right, so now that we've uh, updated our project financials. I'll go in and just show you in action on this project. 
so that you can see that the rates are now being pulled in correctly. So I have Colin Johnson assigned as the action owner here. And if we take a look, Colin Johnson has the project manager function. So that rate should be pulling in for 200 uh, billable. And I've just set an hour uh, on this action so that it's easy to determine that rate. Just gonna edit here. And in the financial summary for the hour, we can see that that rate of $200 is being pulled for that scheduled value, okay? And then again, for the cost value, we can see that rate is being pulled into the action as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. In the event that you need to create different um, uh, rate cards or clone a rate card, you can do so directly from your rate card object or the rate card record in your rate cards object. And what I'll do is, since I already have this open here, go ahead and clone directly from here. Um, so a reason you might wanna do this is if you're setting up your rates for next year. Uh, so this is my rate card for fiscal year 2024, and I might need to add some good old inflation on the project. And then when assigning this rate card to, you know, your projects for fiscal year 20, um, 2024, your rates will be updated according to the values here. All right, so we've now added our values here. We'll go ahead and select save. And we've now cloned our rate card. So what happens if we need to make adjustments for a certain time period on our rate card? Um, this could be we're offering a discount to the customer for the first few months of the project or um, you know, whatever reason you may need to make an adjustment, what you'll need to do is navigate to directly to that rate card and select to manage rates. And um, that way you can do so for all of the projects that are assigned to this rate card instead of navigating to each individual project and updating the values as required from there. Um, so doing so, I've just selected the manage rates button. And we can see I already have my rate card tab populated for the functions that I have um, added to this rate card. And I have the amounts already populated here. So I can say that for my consultants during the first uh, beginning section of my project, the first month of my project, I want to give them a discount. of $20 per billable hour. And my cost rate is going to remain the same for this example. Um, I also will do that for the second consultant on here. This function the, is also relating to the developer 501 skill that has been added to, to this particular um, function. All right, so now I have my rate adjustments. And whenever a user or a role that has this particular function or is completing this skill on the project um, during this time period, they will now have these new rates that we've established for the rate card. Oh, and I forgot to add my rate card rate type. Um, to my rate adjustment. So that was another one of the objects that we need to add the rate card value to. So I'll just show you that while we are on the recording here. All right, so the rate type is a pick list field on my rate adjustment object. And I would just need to add rate card 
in this value in this group of values and that just lets the the system know that whenever rate card is selected as a rate on my project and i select the rate adjustments that rate adjustment will relate to the rate card instead of like your standard role based or skill based overrides okay so going back onto our project i do want to just show you uh, further the the different financials so say you have a another role completing time on the project that is not related to um, the project in like a, a contributor, um, then the role, the rates will be pulled from that user's role. But there's a, a process of um, in the system where those financials will be pulled. So I'm just going to show you um, a breakdown of this quickly. And if you want further information on this, this is available from our project financials knowledge article. And that just shows a breakdown of, you know, when a role is completing time on this project, but they're not assigned to a function that we've created a rate adjustment for or rate card for, um, this is the priority that the rates will be pulled in. So if there isn't a rate card adjustment um, for the function or skill that the user is completing time against, or there isn't a rate card entry, then um, it will be pulled for the function from the function for the specified date range and so forth. So if all else fails and there is no information populated on the rate that the user is supposed to be uh, completing time against, uh, then it will be pulled from your role record. Okay. So I've logged time for Colin against this project. I will also log time from my test user who is assigned to the rate card function um, against this project so that we can see how the time is, how the rates are calculated for that user. So I'm gonna change this to my test user. I will complete one hour. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at that log time or the, the time log that's been created. All right, so for this test user that completed the one hour, we can see in the hours values that's not populated because there's approval. Sorry, one moment. What I'm going to do is um, this is a requiring approval. So I will take this off of here just because I'm not the project owner. My, my user isn't relating to the project owner. So this is going to give me an error if I tried to approve it myself. I'm just going to remove the approval and delete this log and try again. <clears throat> All right. This was for our design action. We're going to log time on behalf of our test user. And just complete one hour. And try that again. All right, so for our one hour that's been completed, we can now see that the hours scheduled completed value pulled in the separate. So on the first one, it was 200. On this one, for the function that's been assigned to the test user, we can see that the value is $180 for the one hour, according to our, our value on the rate card. Okay. And then all of this information will also roll up to our project and our action. Um, 
So it rolls up all from the time log onto our action, which you can see the hours completed value has updated here. And then in our project financials, all of the financials from our hours will roll up into the project detail here. Okay, so we get our scheduled and then any time that was logged, we'll get our um, completed, completed value rolling up to our project as well. Okay, I do see that we have a question and that would be the end of our demo for the rate cards. And the question says, how would you describe the cost rate to be different from the billing rate in most scenarios? Does this impact how you're set up, uh, how you set up your master rate cards? So on my, just going back to the rate card that I've created, Oh, it's giving me a little error here. <clears throat> so going into um, my rate card, I can see my rate card entries here. Um, your cost rate would be the rate that it takes you to have your resource complete the work. And then your billing rate is what you would want to charge your customer for your resource completing the work. And what that will do is roll up into your project financials and give you a profit and loss summary. Um, you'll also get further breakdown into the earned value and the actual values that are, are rolling up in your project financials in the revenue recognition page. Um, so I believe that's what you're asking in regards to cost rate being different from the billing rate. Um, and most times your, your cost rate will be different than what you are charging your customer for the, the resources to complete the work. Uh, let me know if that answers your question, question, Jenny. <clears throat> okay. And then we have another question. What is the prior step before adding rate card to your billing rate field on your project object? Um, this will be a, the, the initial step. If you haven't added uh, the rate card related list to your account, that is another step that can be taken. Um, and, and what that means is when I navigate to an account, will I be able to see this rate card related list? You might need to add this to your page layout. Um, but other than that, your adding your rate card value to your billing rate and cost rate fields would be your next um, setup required. Okay, we have another question coming in. If a team member, for example, a role can serve in multiple functions, would this rate card method work? Basically, is the role to function a one-to-one? -one? If so, I guess the functions would need to be more broadly defined or a different method would be needed. So um, in the event that you have multiple different functions that you would want assigned to a role, you can only assign one function, but in that case, I would use role, I'm um, sorry, I would use skill assignments. Um, so my function for my, my role for my test user is, um, is a trainer or consultant, but when they're completing configuration work, they might have a different rate than when they are completing developer work or whatever the case may be. So in that case, I would set up a, um, like when we're creating our rate cards, go ahead and uh, set up a different value for a skill. And then when setting up your project, Um, this is easiest to do from your create actions page. <clears throat> and I don't have the field added to my layout. I'm sorry. So because I can't do so from here right now without changing my field set, 
I would go in when creating my project and assign a skill on my actions. So when my test user role, so I'll change this to test user just to stay on that example. When my test user is using the developer 501 skill and logging time against this particular action, they're going to get the rate for that developer skill instead of the rate for just the consulting. So they'll get this rate instead of the regular consultant rate of 180. Okay. We have another question coming in. It says this is more of a generic or general mission control question about rates. Who sees cost rates and can they be concealed for most users once rates are set up? Yeah, so you can control which field uh, the users are able to see on their page layout, as well as um, following general field level security. Um, so we have different like permission sets that you can use so that financial fields are hidden from your from certain roles or users. Um, but this will be just standard field level security. So um, if you don't want all of your users to see uh, some of the rates that they may be assigned to, um, you can remove that from the page layout or remove access to those fields altogether with, um, we have like a, mission control full access without financials permission set that can be assigned to the users. So that'll conceal like the billing and the cost rate fields. All right. No problem. Are there any other questions that you guys have? And please feel free to let me know if I didn't completely answer your question. Um, I'd be more than happy to continue on, on screen while we're here. Um, you can also send uh, any suggestions in the webinar chat as well. Pretty great question, so. Okay, we have another one coming in. If we need to apply an OT hours build, how would that look on the rate card? So you would actually establish overtime on your project individually. So instead of on your rate card. And then in your project detail, you'll need to establish how the overtime will be allotted. So when users are completing overtime, um, Will that be, you know, a 1.25 ratio, 1.5 ratio? Um, and then once the overtime has been reached or the amount of hours have been billed for billable, um, then your, your overtime rates will be pulled in. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. No rights. Any more questions or comments? You can also feel free to ask any questions that are related to mission control in general. It doesn't have to be specifically related to um, rate cards as well.
All right, I don't have any further questions com coming in. Uh, I'll allow a few more minutes on the call, just in case um, anyone is still typing out any questions. And then otherwise we'll wrap up this session. You, if you also want to suggest um, different Cosmo campfire options, um, then you can also put that in the webinar chat. We have one more question. Can the overtime be applied by function or skill versus person? So the overtime would only be applied on the project level instead of the individual function or skill. Um, in that case, I would recommend adding in um, like a rate adjustment or um, if there's a different value that you would like for the overtime, um, it, it would either need to be calculated into a, a ratio or um, as a rate adjustment for, for that particular person or skill or function, I'm sorry. Any more questions? Okay, another question coming in. <coughs> Sorry for the silence here, just waiting for the question to load. If you do use skill, was that just defined at the action level similar to skill-based rating? Yes, so I did assign the skill on the action level um, as a role might have multiple different skills that are associated with them and you'll want to know when logging time what, is, what skill is being used on that particular task. So the function skill combination matches with that action to determine the rate. That's correct. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for the questions, Andy. All right, we have a few more moments if anyone else has questions. Can you show how to add accounts? Sure. So that will be on our project level in our project detail. Um, so if you go onto your project record and select edit, then you will have your account filled here to populate the related account. Um, so say this customer is Edge Communications, but I accidentally populated um, my rip curl customer then I won't be able to select the edge communications rate card. So you'll we'll want to make sure that is set correctly.
So instead of the um, account being added to the billing rate, once you add the account here and populate your rate card, that's going to pull in your rate card uh, billing and cost rate. Are you wanting to see how rate card is added to the accounts page layout? Just to better understand your question. Okay, so if, uh, if you don't have rate cards on your account layout, you can come into an account record and select edit object. and navigate to your page layout. And you'll wanna select related lists. So that's gonna jump down to the related list section of your page layout. And if you didn't have rate cards on your page, you'll just drag and drop that onto your page layout and save. All right. All right, and I'll leave the chat open uh, for another minute um, for any other questions. And then if there are no further questions, I will go ahead and wrap up the session for today. All right. I haven't had any more come in yet. Um, so I'll just review our get in touch links. If you have any further questions or trouble setting up your rate cards or any matter for that instance, you can reach us at support at aprika.com or you can submit a ticket online at aprika.com dash mission control dash support ticket. We also have the user guide and training videos available as well as our knowledge base and release notes. So. Uh, when we first released this feature, the, the notes on how to set this up are also included in the 1.63 release notes. We also have our learning portal and chatter group in case there are any uh, group messages that you would like to post. Okay. We also have our bug fix notifications on our chatter. And that will wrap up our session for today as I don't have any further questions. Thank you all so much for joining and uh, please feel free to join us next month for our next campfire, which will be held by Omer. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Have a great remainder of the day.